thing. This is the Trent kit in pieces <laughs> to go on my wife's Metropolitan scooter. This is the Metropolitan and let's get cracking. So the first step is to attach the wheels to this. Some Micro Mini by Topac. A uh, bunch of stuff about warranty. Mount the axles and wheels to the frame as shown below. Hmm. I could use a couple of blocks. Recommendation, don't try this in your lawn. Yeah. So I have put these guys on here. There's a bolt here and then there's a locking nut on the bottom. Don't have them completely tight yet because I'm just getting everything kind of put together and then there's gonna be a process of aligning everything. We've got the wheels on with the lug nuts. They're I believe a 21 millimeter or whatever that equates to in standard. Now the thing about this is all of the hardware is standard. Uh, so, got the wheels on, step in the right direction. Here we are again. I have attached to the wheels. It's got five lug nuts on each wheel. They're not completely socked down yet. The wheel assemblies attached to the hub assemblies, which are here. Hub assemblies have a slider for alignment. They connect here with some pretty heavy duty bolts. The back bit here goes around the back of the scooter and then on the other side you've got the same. It's a relatively easy process. You do have to make sure that you get your torques right and so on and so forth. It then connects to the scooter with these bolts which connect via these little platforms which I've only so far been able to get one side on. With this I actually had to go in with my Dremel and I had to take off a couple little burrs so it would slide in. It slid in, it's connected via a U-bolt here. This side is ready to go. Side A, I have to send back to Topac because they made it wrong, which is fine. It's just, I can't install it because it's not correct. So side A is supposed to insert right in here in this connector for the swing arm. And when you go to insert it, it inserts okay. Not a problem there. Now I do have it frozen <laughs> to aid with that, but then when you try to put a U-bolt, well, it won't go around this part of the swing arm connector because it's supposed to go here. The problem is they sent me a wrong size one. This, this block of metal should probably not be quite so long. It should come to the weld here, just as it does on the other side. And so I'm in contact with them. That's just gonna mean that this video takes longer to get up than I have various pieces here. This is bracket A, there's also bracket B, which I've also already installed on the scooter. Bracket A was not properly made from factory, so I had another one that came in. As you can see, there are some differences here. Looking at the two together, this one's correct, this one's not. So I'm going to go try to put it on the bike and get, hopefully, today, the tow pack installed. I've got a couple more brackets, brackets C and D, which are identical but not, and brackets E and F, which, again, are identical but not. Let's go get this done. ahead of myself here because, apparently, with this, you have to take the seat assembly out. I'm thinking I may do that just to get a jump on things here. There are two little push clips. You simply push down on the center of them and it pops open. So just don't go gank at them and they'll be fine. And then this cover here pops off. Don't know that we needed to take that out or not, but it's worth a look here. Now this is the battery compartment of the scooter. So gonna now take these two bolts off because I don't see any other bolts that are holding the tub in place. So 
So after you remove this piece, it takes a little bit of finagling, but it just pops out. It's in with a couple of push clips and all that. There are two more bolts down in below next to the fuse box here, and those two need to come out in order to get the rest out. We need to be able to get here because some of our pieces are going to bolt onto the frame of the scooter here and here. Ah, there's a little engine, a little 50cc. That is actually really easy to get at for things like, oh, valve maintenance later on in the life of it. Little tiny throttle body. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, fitment of bracket A is right into this slot in the swing arm here. Now, what I found is in order to fit it any further than that, I'm going to have to use a little bit of encouragement. Now that it has been properly encouraged, the U-bolt is in and coming out the other side. It just needs to be secured. process of just tightening these down. You want to tighten them evenly so that you don't end up with an uneven bit there. It looks like I am going to need to uh, move that just a little bit. Okay, they're even now, and the dog is barking at the sirens. And I don't need bracket C, so let's find bracket C. So here we have bracket C, and it goes on to bracket A, like so. So let's get it done. So there's a bolt down below here, and a bolt up above, and we're going to get that secured. Bracket C is now in place. Going to do bracket D, but it's the same on the other side, so I'm not going to show that on video. So I've got that side on and in place. That's bracket E. I'm now trying to attach bracket F, which, because of the unique way that Honda decided to put all that stuff there, <laughs> I've got to take this side panel off to get at where I need to be so I don't break anything. And I've just been struggling and struggling with it. There's a pin right there. Gee, <laughs> take off, apparently get this piece apart. Uh, hopefully that's it. Status update, I've had to loosen several screws, including the ones on the back there. There's a screw hiding up behind here that you can't get at to take this side panel off. That's exciting. <laughs> so thank you Honda for making scooters completely impossible to work on. So what I've got so far, I've gotten up here, I believe this is a ECU, something like that. It's a control unit of some sort and i'm able to put the bits here thankfully honda does use these cool things that are a removable zip tie pull back on that little guy and it unzips so that's good <sighs> so onward and upward i had to move some things aside there and the bracket is now in place now i just need to fasten it down in place just needs to be fastened now oh this is interesting you gotta be careful of all these wires and stuff uh they don't tell you this on the box all right, so really helps to have this piece off, and then you've got to just slowly and surely get in here and get it done. Being careful again to make sure you don't pinch anything unduly. And we've got brackets on front and back. Now we just gotta put all the pieces back together. I have spared you the joyful sounds of me making a lot of grunting noises putting this together. So, take a quick walk around. Still need to tighten up bolts and stuff because the wheels aren't aligned, the fenders aren't on. Gotta put the scooter pretty much back together. However, it is installed. About 15 hours of work later, Maybe not that long. It's it's about four hours of work as far as what I had to do. And just because of the amount of taking stuff apart and so on. We're pretty much we're pretty much there. Gonna have to align it. There's alignment instructions for that, so wow. Just glad to be to this point. So coming up on the right side of the scooter, there's a bolt here that connects to the bracket that goes up inside that I had to loosen these guys to get at. There's a bolt there that goes to a bracket on the swing arm. I'll call this a primary mounting point and that a secondary mounting point. Got a brick behind the back wheels so that it doesn't roll back on me. 
I'm on a bit of a slope doing the work here. There's the one connection on the one side, the other connection on the other side. Back. Okay, so everything's back in. Took a little bit of finagling, but got it. So last step, these are the fenders. They go on these brackets here. There are two of them, one for each side, obviously. You may or may not be able to see it very well. On two corners of each of the fenders, there's a bit of a space there, and that is for a reflector sticker, I believe. So you want to make sure that points on the outside. And they just sit right here. And then you fasten them. Nice background noise there. All right, so there are four parts. You've got the bolt. You've got a nut of sorts. You've got a rubber grommet and then the metal piece here. Bolt goes through metal piece. Metal piece sits on this rubber grommet. This piece comes around the other side, like so, and then bolt screws into that. Takes uh, what I think amounts to a four millimeter Allen. And the fun part of this is trying to work in a small space. And then you just screw in like that. Are they plastic? They are plastic, yep. So I'm going to get the other seven bolts in place and then show you the final product. All right, folks, the fenders are on. This is done. Those reflectors there, they are not actually affixed because I'm waiting until we paint the fenders. I want to paint them the same color as the scooter so they match, but for now, they work. They will do their job as required. I want to take a quick ride and see how it works. Okay, one thing with this, it does work differently than just riding a regular two-wheeled motorcycle. You have to turn like you would a car, really. You have to turn the handlebars in the way that you're trying to go. I have some adjustments to make because it's a little wibbly-wobbly. need to get those right before I have my wife try this because it'll freak her out. Top speed's about 15 at the moment. Well, it's not that the top speed's 15. The top speed that I'm comfortable with is 15 because I've got to do some adjustments and such. A couple things to remember. I can't put my feet down like I would on a motorcycle. When I go to stop, feet stay up. All in all, it seems to do what it's supposed to do. It stabilizes the bike. I do have to realize there's more width there. So with the trike, if you're going in a direction, the wheel on that side actually wants to go the other way which is a little weird, which is why you have to lean to balance that. So, say I want to go left, well, the left wheel wants to go to the right. Physics, all that fun stuff. So when I'm going left, I lean left. When I'm going right, I lean right. Similar in some ways to riding a regular motorcycle, except in some ways a little scarier. But I'll get used to it. But it definitely does what it's supposed to do. It stabilizes the thing. A little weird. Some adjustments need to be made. The Adjustments to the wheel height need to be made. There's an adjuster for that. There's adjusters for alignment, all sorts of things, and it's not quite to the point yet where it's supposed to be. So I'll get that all figured out. And then hopefully by next Saturday, I will have it completely ready for my wife to ride. I'm actually going 25 and I'm stable. This is not too bad, actually, now that I'm on a non-crappy road surface. This is a 25 mile an hour zone, so that works. So slow it down, break a bit. And turn the way I want to go. Huh. Okay, so shout out to Topak. It's a decent product. Works very well. Their customer service was flawless. They sent me a part that wasn't made correctly. And I didn't freak out. I know in fabricating these things, they don't do a ton of these micro minis. They do them for a lot of the larger bikes and scooters. <laughs> this leaning thing is kind of freaking me out. Anyway, at a slow speed, it's crazy. It's just a different process, leaning over that back wheel. Oh, no problems. Yeah, all right, that'll work. That'll work. That sound is the license plate. Got to shut it off so it shuts up. All right, so Topak Micro Mini Kit. Installed. Seems to be a reasonable product. And it works. And I put it on. Heh, <laughs> something. Well, thanks for watching, folks. Hope I covered everything. Again, Topak's great to work with. Product seems good. Made here in the U.S. Some of the parts aren't, but they 
fabricate it here in the U.S. There are a couple bits and pieces that are made in China. Let's face it, it's a global economy. It's the world we live in. If you have a issue that keeps you from being able to ride a regular motorcycle, there's an option for you. And it was kind of fun to do. It took me about four and a half hours to put together completely. All right. Again, thanks for watching. Be safe, be well, and be blessed. May the wind always be at your back, and may your wheels never be parallel to the ground. Scoot and fool out.